a something that I think a lot of us once you realize that stories have power the next step is okay so how do i make sure i tell a good one which is coupled with the fear of i don't want to tell a bad story (laughs) um so this was actually a question that i sought to answer in my first book stories that stick uh to give people an opportunity because i think another reason that stories get shut out or not utilized to their full potential is we think that storytelling is a talent that some people have and some people don't. And, but if you think about that, if you consider yourself one of the people who isn't a talented storyteller, and yet stories are so critical, whether in business or in life, you're kind of opting out of excellence in business or in life. Um, So I much rather have people understand a storytelling as a skill, as something that they can practice and get better at. And to make that even easier to do, we actually studied what are the components that make a story great, what make a story more compelling, more memorable, more influential or persuasive, or even just more entertaining. Uh, And from that research, we tested four different key components that a story Um, needs to have. And the four components were an identifiable character. There needs to be a person in the story. Oftentimes in business, we leave the character out. And instead we talk about the brand or the product or, you know, but unless it's even the, I mean, unless it's the M&Ms, right? Who but they all are characters. They're all characters. Yeah. One of the M&Ms is a different, has an entire personality, likes, dislikes. So stories need to have a character in them that the person listening can identify and on some level identify with. This character is a tool to draw people in and bring them into the world of the story. The second thing a story needs to have is authentic emotion. Now, this isn't big dramatic emotion. Not every story needs to make someone cry, but emotion that is relatable and real. And we all feel emotions all day, every day. For example, here's one. I'm just going to pull it out just today. I was walking, I left my apartment. So I live in New York City. I left my apartment and went down, was going down to the coffee shop to get a coffee. Now, typically I grab a coffee after, right after I go to Soul Cycle, and I have my bag with all of my shoes and water and everything in it. And I always have a mask in that bag. Keep in mind, in New York, we don't drive cars. Like I walk to my spin class, I walk to my coffee shop, like you walk everywhere. That's why we really only live within five blocks. It's, I don't know anything (laughs) else beyond the five blocks that I live in. Um, Usually I go right after spin class today. I didn't go to spin. So I was going to get my coffee later. I grabbed my keys. I grabbed my phone. I ran out the door. I got out onto the street and realized, shoot, I don't have a mask. And it's that, that moment of like, oh, gosh, now what do I do? Do I go all the way back upstairs? Do I run in and and be ridiculed? Because I'm not, do I hide under my jacket? Like that looks stupid. Do I, do I just give up and not even get a, you know, this feeling of like, oh, shoot. And just then I walked by one of the doormen, not of my building, but a building next door who I walk by every morning. And I don't know his name. I need to learn his name. And I looked at him and said, Hey, you don't by chance have an extra mask. I, and I didn't even say the word mask. I said, you don't by chance have an extra. He's like mask. And he pulled open his coat and pulled out a mask and gave it to me. And I was like, oh, thank you so much. And I went on my way and got my coffee. Okay. So this isn't an earth shattering story. However, have you felt that feeling of, oh my gosh, do I like, now is it even, you have a really busy day. Like, is it even worth it to go get the thing that I forgot? Right. Have you had that feeling before Nick? Yeah. I'm actually, I was on my way to a meeting this morning and it wasn't quite bright out yet. And I knew that I didn't bring my glasses, my sunglasses. And I knew by the time I got onto the interstate, it was going to be bright out. And I was going to be doing the squinty eyes with the visor and trying to lift my head up and down. Right. Yeah. I I was like four minutes out. And I was like, you know what? I got to turn around because this is just going to be a painful experience on the way back. So yes, hundred percent. So see right there. Now I can turn. So, so what? 
I guess the point that I'm making here is that what you said right there, like we've all had this and you just happen to, ha- I mean, we may have been having the same experience at the exact same time, right? Mm-hmm. That is authentic emotion that when you're like, oh, oh, I can relate to that. Like there's, it wasn't, you're not crying. You're not like, this is the most inspirational thing that I've ever heard. And that story in of, in and of itself that I just told doesn't necessarily have a moral. It'd be really easy to make it have a moral and to say, you know, I, I have never, I've always appreciated the kindness of strangers, but never more so now than in our individual lives as we've been so separate from each other. And, and that, you know, how, how even these small connections with strangers can make a huge difference in your day, right? Like I can make that a, but so authentic emotion being one of the components, it doesn't have to be big. It just has to be real. Like I felt that way and the realness of it connects to you. So that's only component number two. Component number three is um, a moment in time. You did it just there, even though you weren't necessarily telling a story, but you were explaining your morning and you were sitting in the car and I, without even really realizing it was sitting in the car next to you. I was actually in the, I was kind of sitting on your lap if I think about it. Um, So sorry, it was probably inhibiting your ability to drive, but picturing like I could see the visor and you trying to like squint around it. I was picturing you on the freeway. Like that's what that component is, is now were, were you able to picture any of my story? As yeah. I was telling you, the, the whole story, I, I felt like it was like a, this, the, the, you know how you had the goggles back on with the kid, you can yeah. like slide through. That was like what I was seeing as, as you were telling me about. And have you ever lived in New York City? Never, never, never. I've been I've, to New York City, but I still, it made me know exactly where you were at in that exact spot because how you describe it. So, and, and so that right there, like you don't have to live here. You maybe have never even, maybe somebody listening has never even been to New York city, but you can picture what city blocks look like. And you're, you're right there with me. So, so that's one of those key components is giving them enough, like putting the story in a place and a time so that the person listening can see themselves there with you as awkward as it is to be trying to drive with someone sitting on your lap. That's the goal. And then to drive that the fourth component is specific details um, because our brains, as we're, as we're listening to stories, we pick up on these small details and it without even realizing it. And our brains love it doing this and where this is really effective in, in business and beyond is it's an opportunity for you. If you include these details and they're related to the person you're talking to, you get to say without saying anything like, I really understand where you're coming from. You know, like if I was a mother of a young child and described like that moment when you finally get the stroller to snap into place after you pull it out of the trunk, like that's showing, and I'm talking to an audience of mothers with young children, like maybe that, maybe I'm trying to sell baby food. I don't know, but that small detail, that click, the that click of the sound of a stroller or when you finally get it straightened out of your trunk, they, they are picturing that moment. And you're also saying without saying it, like, I get you. I I know who you are at this level that you otherwise wouldn't have understood. So that's what makes the story great. And I hope you can tell it even as I'm sharing, just like going through the list here, how, how easy it actually is to do right? Like if you just have those four check marks and it seems so obvious then after you say it, but that'll make your story great. 